Hi, welcome to Cooking with Greg. It's been a few weeks since I've done a video. Sorry about that. I'm afraid I've had some family issues. My mum's been very ill. And I've been quite worried about it, so I haven't been making some videos. However, things are better now and uh, we're ready to go. Today I'm going to be doing Chicken Salon. This is a tribute for those who were in the bombings in Sri Lanka. This is a tasty and quite spicy recipe. And warning, there are a lot of ingredients, including cashew paste. I'll tell you now how to make the cashew paste. You get enough raw cashews, soak them in cold water for 30 minutes, drain the water, put them into a spice grinder, blender, and add just enough water to make a paste, just blitz it till you get a paste. That'll keep in the fridge for about three or four days, or you can freeze it. Just make enough for the recipe that you're using here. It'll be about two tablespoons. Okay, so let me show you the ingredients. For your ingredients, you'll need four tablespoons of oil, two star anise, two one half inch pieces of cinnamon, four smashed cardamom pods, 20 frozen or fresh curry leaves. I got these ones from Amazon. Two tablespoons of ginger garlic paste. And in there also you can see two bird's eye chilies, green ones finely chopped. But two tablespoons of coconut flour. Three tablespoons of finely chopped coriander stalks. In here is one teaspoon of Kashmiri chili powder. I'm using a mild one. And also two tablespoons of mixed powder. I'll show you the link to that in the description below. In here we have one tablespoon of tandoori masala and one sorry half a tablespoon of black pepper half a cup of tomato puree two and a half cups of your base curry sauce 800 grams of pre-cooked chicken there'll be a link to that at the end of this video how's it going half a cup of chicken stock 100 grams of creamed coconut, finely chopped. In here, you've got your two tablespoons of raw cashew paste, which I told you how to make at the beginning, and also the meti fenugreek leaves. There's a teaspoon of that in there. In here we have two tablespoons of smooth mango chutney and the juice of one lime. We have some sugar to taste and three tablespoons of finely chopped coriander. You'll also want some garam masala because I haven't put it out. It's one teaspoon of garam masala. Okay, let's get cooking. Okay, first thing to do Turn your heat on and get the pan hot. Doesn't take long with a thin bottom wok like this. Yep, that's hot already. Four tablespoons of oil. One, two, three, four. Is it in? And you put in your whole dry spices and let them sizzle for about 30 seconds. Keep an eye on these, you don't want them to burn. Turn that down a bit. Okay, now you put in your curry leaves. Ow. It's a bit. 
See, I was smoking, it's way too hot. I'm on a lower setting. Okay, now you add in the ginger garlic paste and the chilies. leaves have gone a bit black I think that's because the oil was too hot hopefully that hasn't done too much damage or even coconut flour give it a mix and let that cook for about a minute and that's my fire alarm <coughs> not having the extractor on. powder and your chili powder and your tandoori masala and your black pepper and mix I'll take you right. I'll add about a cup of your chili sauce, sorry, your own curry sauce. When you add in your chicken, about 800 grams of pre-cooked chicken. to your curry sauce and 
and your stock from the pre-cooked chicken. gentle when you're stirring this because you don't want to smash up your chicken. Now you add in the coconut. Just let that simmer for about five minutes. I'll come back to you in five minutes when it's done. Okay, that's had five minutes just to heat through. Give it a test of that. Still not there. Yeah, still going to need a few more minutes. I'm going to have to add a little bit of water, otherwise, this is going to get too thick. The recipe says it takes five minutes to heat through, it's obviously taking longer than that. Try and distribute the heat evenly. This wok, as you can see, it's not quite flat, it's got a wobble to it. Let's go in with a flatter bottom. I'll take a hammer to this one. <laughs> I'm just hoping that those uh, spices at the beginning won't too burn because otherwise it'll make them bitter. And of course when this is done you have to fish out the uh, whole spices. I don't recommend chewing on a star anise or um, cinnamon. Not particularly pleasant. Neither is cardamom for that matter. So yeah, if you can find them, fish them out. Just going to turn that down a bit. That's more like it. That is good enough for me. Let's do another bit.
Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Now it's time to add in your cashew paste, your meti leaf, fenugreek leaf, and the garam masala. And then here's your mango chutney and your lime juice. Some people like this quite sour. I'm not really a big fan of sour flavours. So you can counteract sourness with some sugar and just give it a taste in a sec. Yeah, it's going to want some sugar. I'm just going to eyeball this. I reckon a couple of tablespoons. The other thing about adding sugar is it, if you notice, it gets nice and glossy. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that's much better. Sprinkling the curry over. Stir that in. Half of it. I want to have something on the top to make it a bit nice. Off the heat and we're ready to serve. And here you have it, chicken salon. Mmm. Oh wow, that's really nice. Mmm. Apart from a bit of cinnamon. Don't forget to take out your whole spices. got some acidity from the lime, not too much, some sweetness from the sugar, heat from the chilli and a nice sort of thick creamy, creaminess and coconutty taste as well, obviously from the coconut flour and the uh, nuttiness from the cashew paste. Yep, that's a good one. This recipe came from the book The Curry Guy by Dan Toombs. Thanks Dan, great recipe. That book's available on Amazon if you want to grab it. Just like to say thank you and uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Cooking with Greg. Bye.